Tonight, Shane Warne's heartbreaking homecoming finally complete. A touching tribute to the cricket legend. Both sides of politics rocked by the sudden death of a Victorian senator. Breaking news from National Cabinet in the wake of a new, more contagious COVID strain. Northern Territory at Flashpoint after a policeman charged with the murder of an Indigenous man is found not guilty. Russian forces surge closer to Ukraine's capital, the latest live from the war zone. And Melbourne Airport back to its busy best as a million Victorians prepare to party at Moomba. Live from Melbourne, 7 News with Rebecca Madden. Good evening. The heartbreaking mission to bring Shane Warne home is complete, with a cricket legend finally back in Melbourne. Warne's tight-knit family gathered at Essendon Airport for his return, including Mother Bridget, who carried a single white rose in his honour. Sharing hugs, Shane Warne's children comfort one another, alongside their mother, Simone Callaghan, a family united for the return of Australian cricket's king. The Australian-owned private jet touched down at Essendon Airport shortly after 8.30, marking the beginning of the nation's farewell to an icon. Warren's parents also attended the private hangar with close friends and his personal assistant, his mother Bridget holding a single white rose. The hangar was closed so his coffin could be removed in private. Cricketing fans were drawn there to mark the sad occasion, wanting to send their best wishes to Warren's family. It was good to see the plane come in knowing he's on home soil where he belongs. So yeah, 100%. rest in peace Shane. It's pretty sad what is happening tonight. That's all I can say and wish the family all the best. Jackson Warren drove his late father's car. Everything you do. He posted a video tribute to his dad, sharing happy memories and thanking the public for the overwhelming support the family has received. Shane Warne loved the St Kilda Football Club. The Saints are now considering how best to pay their respects to the cricket legend at their opening match of the season against Collingwood at Marvel Stadium. Warne's family is planning a private memorial to lay him to rest. Public tributes continue to flow, including this new mural in Black Rock. A state funeral will be held at the MCG on March 30. Emma Rose Sullivan, 7 News. Both sides of Parliament have been rocked by the shock death of highly respected Victorian Labor Senator Kimberley Kitching. Ms Kitching died of a suspected heart attack last night. The 52-year-old is being remembered for her advocacy on human rights. To lose someone who was so full of life so early is such a terrible tragedy. A great loss uh, to the Parliament. Ms Kitching was first elected to Parliament in 2016. COVID cases are on the rise again, fuelled by a more contagious Omicron strain that is sweeping the country. Further vaccinations are being considered ahead of winter, but epidemiologists say the son of Omicron isn't all bad news. The latest push to get vaccinated. Come down to Bunnings in coming days and weeks, get your tools, get your vaccine and get your snag before we hit the colder months. If you want to forget about COVID, then get your booster. And that's the best way of making sure we move on. BA2, or son of Omicron, is slowly becoming Victoria's dominant strain. It's certainly growing. Well and truly, Omicron 1, if you like, uh, has taken over from Delta some time ago. But we've seen a steady increase in the BA2 subvariant. Although new cases in Victoria remain steady at 6,800, in New South Wales, 14,000 infections, cases nearly doubling in a week. So many people have already been found by Omicron BA1, those that haven't are uh, in the firing line for BA2. Health authorities are watching New South Wales closely, but just how worried should we be? Not too worried. You do have immunity from Omicron BA1 to the new one, BA2. Uh, vaccination still works very well. And so there's a, a good incentive for those few people who haven't had a, a booster yet to go out and get it. We know that it's more infectious or more transmissible than Omicron, probably 25 to 30 percent more. But the good news is it doesn't seem to be any more severe 
and it doesn't seem to be any more evasive in terms of uh, getting around our vaccines. Right now, our third dose rate sits just under 62%, but a fourth dose could be on the cards for the most vulnerable. There will be those kind of considerations that ATAGI will come back to states and territories in the Commonwealth in coming days. And in breaking news, National Cabinet met this afternoon and agreed that rules around quarantine for close contacts should be removed as soon as possible. In Victoria, that would mean if the state government chose to adopt the advice, household contacts would no longer have to isolate for seven days because someone in their home had tested positive. Beck, Chanel Vella, thank you. The Northern Territory is at flashpoint tonight after a policeman charged with the murder of an Indigenous man was found not guilty. Constable Zach Rolfe opened fire when he was stabbed with a pair of scissors. And a warning to Indigenous viewers, this report shows an Aboriginal man who's died. Four weeks of detailed evidence distilled into two words, not guilty. Well, obviously, I think that was the right decision to make, but a lot of people are... Hurting today. Zach Rolfe, the Northern Territory policeman for the last two years accused of murdering Kumanjai Walker during an arrest at the remote community of Yundamu, today vindicated by the 12 men and women of the jury, cleared of murder. The lesser charges of manslaughter and engaging in a violent act causing death, also not guilty, a clean sweep. A uh, young man lost his life, but um, let's not forget Constable Rolfe um, and Constable Ebel were set upon um, viciously. The reaction inside the courtroom, an audible gasp, not guilty on all counts. Senior police sitting not far from us burst into tears. The family of Kumanjai Walker, emotion of a very different kind. When we are going to get justice? When? The Crown threw everything at the young officer. Their case, the first shot was justified as Kumanjai stabbed Officer Rolf with scissors. But that shots two and three were murder. That, though, was rejected by the jury. The defence not only labelling the Crown's evidence as nonsense, but claiming the police executive of the Northern Territory tried desperately to cover up a non-existent investigation. The police commissioner, captured here by Seven's Spotlight program, playing golf in Adelaide during closing arguments of this trial, fronting a late press conference. The coronial inquest that is due later this year will oblige us to maintain our level of respect. Thank you. Commissioner, will there be any resignation over the result today? Doesn't look good for the police commissioner to be walking away, sir. Zach Rolfe's parents at their son's side for every day of this court battle. I was so nervous. I was so nervous. Tonight, police here and in Alice Springs are bracing for trouble. We are all so full of anger and grief. It is a racist system that we got here in Australia. As Rolfe's legal team hints, their fight also isn't over. I have one last thing to say. Consequences will flow. In Darwin, Denham Hitchcock for Seven News. Russian forces are surging closer to Ukraine's capital tonight. They're now just kilometres from Kyiv, but facing fierce fight back from a nation vowing to never surrender as the human suffering deepens. A city under relentless siege. <laughs> Mariupol burning, bombed for another day. A boy wounded and trapped, no mercy for rescue teams. A day after the horrifying missile attack on a maternity hospital that killed at least three people, one of them a six-year-old child. But Russia claims it was all staged. Its foreign minister says women and children had long been evacuated. It was being used as an army barracks. And while the world saw images of misery filmed by independent journalists, Russia called claims of civilian casualties nothing more than a pathetic outcry. But in a city that just two weeks ago was thriving, its people are being interred in mass graves. And the living are frozen in fear. As Russia surges closer to the capital, a column of tanks just 16 kilometres outside Kyiv under attack. 
Hit by rockets from Turkish-supplied Bayraktar drones, a weapon now so famous, Ukraine's made its own hero song. Bayraktar, Bayraktar. Military leaders say they're holding back the enemy. But ahead of those tanks, Russian soldiers are on reconnaissance. You can hear down there, that's just a couple of kilometres away, that's small arms fire. Some sort of machine gun. That's an exchange of gunfire. Now this is only a couple of kilometres away from the northern suburbs of Kyiv, the capital. A hospital just here, gunfire over there. We put the drone up to find them. Ukraine soldiers were keen to see as well. The patrol had melted into the landscape, but across the horizon, Russia's trail of destruction is clear to see. And it's fueling a metropolitan migration. In the two weeks since the Russians first rolled over Ukraine's borders, this city, the capital Kyiv, has emptied of residents. The mayor saying today that of the four million strong population, half, two million people, have now fled. But for those in cities like Mariupol, there's no safe way out. This was the city's emergency services headquarters, meaning saving people just got harder. Ukraine will never, never be a victory for Putin. But the suffering has no end in sight. In Kyiv. Chris Rezin joins us now live from Kyiv. Hello, Chris. It's getting increasingly desperate for people in Ukraine. Good evening, Beck. Uh, in that city of Mariupol, they have no electricity, no water, no gas, no sewage, no internet, no power, uh, no connection at all with the outside world, no food, no water, but there are a lot of desperate people there. Every single shop has been looted bare. We're getting reports of people breaking into each other's petrol tanks in cars to steal the petrol inside. And the International Red Cross uh, Committee says today that people have actually started attacking each other for food. It is desperate. Now, Russia this morning has announced it's going to allow humanitarian corridors every day to open at nine o'clock. The locals say, Beck, that is laughable. Clearly hasn't worked for Mariupol. They have promised this so many times and rarely delivered. Beck? It is just getting worse. Chris Raisin, thank you. A Victorian couple risking their lives to bring their newborn home from Ukraine has finally met their precious daughter, Elba. Jess and Kevin have made it to safely into Ukraine and say meeting little Elba was the best day of their lives. But they stress she has a long road ahead after being born 10 weeks early via a local surrogate. Growing sanctions on Russia has left one of the world's biggest football clubs with an uncertain future. The billionaire owner of Chelsea has been targeted over ties with Vladimir Putin, but the blow is being felt heaviest by the fans. On the road at Norwich, Chelsea players stripped of their sponsors. And as Chelsea turn their attention to the Premier League again after a day dominated by off-field headlines. Now a club in crisis. It's just a shock to us as supporters, obviously, for going games, even going to this, the, the mega store and that. We don't know how long it's going to be. Billionaire club owner Roman Abramovich, tight with Vladimir Putin, part owner of a company Britain believes supplied steel to make Russian tanks. Now he's banned from the UK and his assets, including yachts, mansions and the crown jewel at Stamford Bridge, frozen. I think people in this country uh, can see that people connected uh, to the Putin regime uh, need to be sanctioned and that's what we're doing. Chelsea now can't sell tickets or merchandise. Abramovich has loaned the loss-making club more than $2.5 billion over nearly two decades. The five-time Premier League champions now seemingly paying the price for accepting his money feels like it's sports washing and it has sort of worked. I mean, I sort of love him still. Western governments, including the UK and US, can see punishing Moscow comes at a cost. Britain says the goal is to take the Russian economy out at the knees. As the list of global corporations pulling out of Russia grows, the president spoke of nationalising their assets left behind. We need to act decisively here, Vladimir Putin said, as he banned exports from leaving Russia. In London, Hugh Whitfeld, Seven News. Five people are in hospital tonight after their helicopter went down in the snowy mountains. The pilot decided to make an emergency landing when the chopper got into trouble. Rescue crews delicately stretching passengers from the wreckage in the middle of remote bushland. It certainly is rare um, for this to occur. 
Uh, helicopters don't go down very often um, and, and, and in this location. The Civil Aviation Authority is investigating. Violent thugs who stabbed and tried to run down a tow truck driver have been jailed for a maximum of four years. Ali El Nashir and Ricard McHale pleaded guilty but gave no motive for the frenzied attack outside a Campbellfield factory. A county court judge today said the victim was lucky to have not been more seriously injured after he was stabbed in the arms, chest and neck. Tens of thousands of travellers have made their way through Melbourne Airport ahead of a bumper long weekend. For those staying home, the Moomba Festival is set to draw crowds back to the banks of the Yarra. Flying into the Labor Day long weekend. Melbourne Airport's busiest day in almost two years, back to 70% pre-pandemic levels. They've seen 73,000 come through the airport today. Roads out of town this weekend are busy. We're seeing places that are booked out now um, right the way through the long weekend. Getaways costing motorists more than usual with record high prices at the pump. For those staying in Melbourne... Moomba is back, baby. Around one million people set to flock to the banks of the Yarra over the three days. Australia's biggest free community festival back in full swing this year after it was scaled back during the pandemic. The Birdman Rally is back. The Moomba Parade is back. The water skiing, wakeboarding is back. The rides are back, the fireworks are back. It's going to be amazing. You can't go past the usual draw cards either. Food, rides, entertainment for kids of all ages. <laughs> In the past two days, movement across the CBD has bounced back to 70% pre-COVID levels. Victoria Police will be out in force to ensure a safe carnival experience. It's a family friendly event, it's a, an event which is very, very safe. Victoria Police has been working really hard with the City of Melbourne and with other stakeholders to make sure that this is a safe and enjoyable weekend for everybody. If your intent is to come here to cause trouble, then don't bother. The gates have been open for just over an hour now. Tonight you can catch the BMX Championships, the men's water skiing, there's live music as well as the fireworks display at 9.30. Pet owners are being encouraged to keep their furry friends inside during this time over the next four days. Beck, We can certainly hear the band. Sarah Jones, thank you very much. Well, former AFL boss Andrew Dimitriou claims he would have done all he could to ensure Joe Watson kept his Brownlow medal during the Essendon Supplements scandal. I was terribly sad to see him lose the Brownlow and I wasn't there when the decision was taken, but I would have fought very hard for him not to lose the Brownlow. Dimitrio says the AFL was hoodwinked by the government during its infamous Blackest Day in Sport media conference. A footy star's had a change of heart over his vaccine stance. Chief football reporter Tom Brown has the details. Tom, a Premiership Eagles standoff with the AFL. Well, it's over. Beck, Jack Darling is one of the competition's superstars and was easily the most high-profile, outstanding vaccination for the issue for the league. That issue today has officially been resolved. West Coast, in a statement a short time ago, says that Darling has now complied with all the AFL and other requirements with respect to that vaccination program. He was back at the club today, darling, and obviously have to work on his fitness, but at one stage it did threaten his $3 million remaining component of his four-year deal. Back in breaking news from the AFL, they have found Jordan Degoe, separate to Collingwood's sanction and findings, guilty of conduct unbecoming. He'll be required to go in to contribute $10,000 to a fine. I'll have more on that story shortly in sport that's developing concerning Jordan Degoe, Beck. OK, thank you very much, Tom Brown. Well, one of Geelong's biggest stars could be faced with an old-age dilemma. Tim Watson is set to be a nervous wait for, for Tom Stewart. <laughs> Beck, family over footy could mean the All-Australian sits out the season opener, plus the fitness fight continues for a host of big names ahead of the season premiere. Why the dogs are sick of playing favourites, our newest test leg spinner officially gets the green light as Alex Carey goes straight to the pool room 
And back Ben Simmons has copped a savage response in his return to Philadelphia. He would have been expecting that, all that and more yeah. shortly. Did he what? Thank you very much, Tim. Well, an evil wife has just been jailed for a crime the judge described as outrageous, horrific and disturbing. That's next on 7 News. Also, health authorities wage war on a dangerous mosquito virus. The desperate mission to find shelter for displaced flood victims. Why Woolies is renaming one of its most popular items. And later, the same day delivery promises online shopping sales soar. Victorians are being urged to protect themselves from mosquito bites this long weekend. It comes in the wake of two deaths, recent deaths, from the Japanese encephalitis virus. The federal government today announced it's investing $69 million to control the spread of JEV. There have so far been 15 confirmed human cases in Australia. An evil mother who set her husband on fire has been sentenced to 12 years jail. Angela Surtees spun a web of lies to detectives trying unsuccessfully to blame her husband for his own death. Angela Surtees set her husband alight in an argument she says went 50 shades of wrong. Daniel Surtees suffering an agonising death with burns to 80% of his body. Nothing will ever bring Daniel back. In 2020, Mr Surtees was sitting in an armchair when his angry wife doused him in petrol and lit a cigarette lighter to scare him. But the 36-year-old father did catch fire. Mrs Surtees speaking calmly to a triple zero call taker as she sprayed her screaming husband with a hose. You went on to say he was sitting on the chair and he's copped like a full brunt of it. Mrs Surtees then spun lies about what happened, saying the fire was an accident. When Mr Surtees' brother gave doctors permission to turn off the dad's life support, Mrs Surtees sent heartless letters from prison, blaming him for her husband's death. You and you alone caused his tragic death by your criminal and outrageous actions. Today, a loud gasp was heard as Supreme Court Justice Andrew Tinney sentenced her to 12 years jail. When placed under arrest, Angela Surtees told police she wasn't a monster and didn't belong in a cage. She'll now spend at least eight years behind bars before her earliest possible release date. Mrs Surtees' traumatised children are now cared for by her husband's family, who never want to hear from her ever again. Estelle Greeping, 7 News. Woolworths is changing the name of its Chicken Kiev to Chicken Kiev in a gesture of solidarity with the people of Ukraine. The change has already come into effect online and will gradually be rolled out in store. The supermarket will also donate 50 cents from each pack sold to the Red Cross Ukraine crisis appeal. Residents living in flood-affected areas north of Sydney are finally being allowed back into their homes as the water slowly recedes. But some are choosing to pack up for good after two years of natural disasters. For Lorna Lattenstein at Windsor, it's a long list of write-offs. Fridge, freezers, beds, wardrobes, uh, TV units, all, you know, a lot of personal stuff, photos. Basically only got clothes left that I can hopefully salvage. It's quite shit. But at least she's got help. The Air Force from nearby Richmond Air Base also chipping in. A few doors down, a familiar routine. We just got the house fixed up from last year's flood and then it happened. The Smiths retreated upstairs knowing their hard work downstairs was being washed away in a matter of hours. Last year was the worst to date and then this year I'm um, sort of took it one step further. Here along Harris Street in Windsor, about 30 homes went underwater and while everyone's thoughts today and for the next few weeks will be on the immediate cleanup, they have another decision to make, whether to stay and risk more floods or leave for good. It's done. This is done. This house isn't livable. At last check, inflows at Warragamba Dam are still 70 gigalitres a day. The spill rate, 82 gigalitres. It's not expected to stop spilling until Monday at the earliest. Tom Saker, 7 News.
Jane Bunn joins us now with the weather. Jane, how does it look this long weekend? Well, Becca, we are warming up and there's lots of sunshine on the way. This morning it was cool. The city began the day on 12 as the MCG gets ready for footy next week. Head further east and it was just 4.8 in the Yarra Valley with a bit of fog. Head west though and there was cloud overhead. Now minimum temperatures reflect that difference in the sky. 14 in Werribee, 8 in Scoresby. The city reached 20 this afternoon but it'll warm up from here. The full details are after sport back. Great. Thank you very much, Jane. Well, up next, a Melbourne clinic under fire over an IVF bungle that's left shattered families heartbroken. Also, an incredible honour for a Russell Street bombing hero. New trouble for Melbourne's infamous Montague Street Bridge. And a Hollywood star jailed over an elaborate fake hate crime. A truck has been ripped apart after hitting the Montague Street Bridge in South Melbourne. This morning's collision is the first at the infamous bridge this year. Police were forced to divert traffic in the area, closing the left northbound lane on Montague Street. A Melbourne medical clinic is under fire over an IVF scandal. Monash IVF is accused of continuing to spruik genetic tests even though it knew they were faulty. Angela and Phil Sobrano have been desperately trying for a baby for years. They say Monash IVF has failed them. It was a real kick in the guts to, to find out that Monash were actually aware that the testing was in fact faulty and yet they were still pushing it upon patients. Documents released by the TGA reveal Monash IVF knew a genetic test it used was faulty but promoted it to patients anyway. It wrongly identified hundreds of embryos as abnormal. As a result, they were destroyed. I find it unimaginable that they actually didn't suspend the testing when concerns were raised. The clinics were alerted to flaws in the testing in June 2020, but waited three months before ceasing to use it. The company's also alleged to have manipulated data during clinical trials to make tests appear more accurate. Humans make errors, that, 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 that is okay, of course, but if they're knowingly going into something and, and this is something that they knew was, was actually false, um, where's the accountability? In a statement, Monash IVF says it launched a review into the genetic test as soon as it became aware of strange trends in the clinical data. And it says it stopped using the test as soon as the results of the review came back. One would think that they would reach out to patients and actually have a conversation um, and an exchange direct with the patients instead of kind of hearing this news through the media. Jodie Lee, 7 News. The federal election campaign hasn't even begun, but things are already turning ugly. Voters are tonight being warned to think twice about political billboards. Hey guys. The election campaign is still weeks away, but it's already getting down and dirty. This mobile billboard doing laps around Parliament House, showing Chinese President Xi Jinping casting a vote for Labor. And it's within the electoral laws. I'm not going to treat that with anything other than the contempt that it deserves. Though Unions New South Wales is now distributing its own posters mocking Scott Morrison for his Hawaiian holiday during the black summer bushfires. This one, authorised by Advance Australia, a right-wing lobby group, the Australian Electoral Commission says the billboards are covered under freedom of political communication, though warns it is the voters' role to stop and consider what they see this federal election. What Anthony Albanese wanted voters to see today was him doing what Scott Morrison wouldn't, mixing in public with victims of the New South Wales floods. Taking in the destruction on Lismore's main street, meeting locals like Richard Hughes. We're just really pleased to see someone who shows leadership here and listen to the community. He says that contrasts with Scott Morrison's visit. The photos of him scurrying in and out of the back door of the council chambers says it all, I think. Mark Riley, 7 News. The captain of a stolen yacht has rampaged through a Los Angeles marina. Oh. Witnesses say a woman on board one of those badly damaged boats was hurt. It's not clear if the man lost control of the vessel or if his actions were deliberate.
An actor found guilty of orchestrating a fake hate crime against himself has been sentenced to 150 days behind bars. Jussie Smollett maintained his innocence as the judge launched a scathing attack. You let attack. that dark, narcissistic, selfish and arrogant side come out and you persisted with it for years. But I did not do this and I am not suicidal. And if anything happens to me when I go in there, I did not do it to myself. He'll also pay a combined $200,000 in restitution and fines. The first Police Bravery Award has been presented for the Russell Street bombing 36 years after the deadly blast. Prominent lawyer Bernie Barmer was honoured today for comforting seriously injured young officer Angela Taylor. 36 years on, Bernie Barmer hopes this award will ease his trauma from the Russell Street bombing. Getting this award, I don't feel like I'm, apart from my family, swimming alone anymore. I feel like there's a lot more support and I really appreciate it. Thank you. When a car bomb exploded outside the then police headquarters, 21-year-old Constable Angela Taylor suffered horrific burns. The lawyer ran towards her. There was this very seriously injured girl um, who I got and um, took her back into the Melbourne Magistrates Court. As all hell broke loose, he battled to stay calm. And I was just trying to say, look, it'll be all right. Uh, I'll get people here to help and started ringing triple L. There was fire, smoke, debris, um, there were detonators exploding. Uh, Bernie just put all that to one side. Her last word to him described those who did this. I can remember she said the bastards. Angela died 24 days later. 21 others were injured, men who hated police responsible. The pain lingers. I get it every day. Something will happen, dropping a plate, big noise. Um, yeah, you jump a bit. He's carried this as a very big burden for a long time. We've definitely seen the impact and just happy that he can have the recognition he deserves. A long time coming, but heartfelt. It was really important that his actions and his behaviours and his courage on the day has been recognised. You don't think about your own mortality in those situations. The inclination is to help. Nick McCallum, 7 News. Sausage-loving Victorians are doing their bit to help flood-impacted communities. Bunnings is donating every cent from today's sausage sizzle sales to flood victims in New South Wales and Queensland. On top of the fundraiser, Bunnings has pledged $120,000 in essential products and funds. The battle for your online shopping dollars is heating up. Up next, a new promise to deliver your packages inside an hour. Also, the Aussie TV star fighting to clear his name. A much-needed boost for the Royal Melbourne show. And nursing storm-affected turtles back to health. Former TV host Andrew O'Keefe has appeared in court formally pleading not guilty to assault and choking charges. O'Keefe appeared via video link from Silverwater Jail where he was dressed in prison greens. The 50-year-old was hit with six charges after he was alleged to have attacked a woman in a Sydney apartment in January. The Royal Melbourne show has been given a much needed funding boost to help ease the pain of being cancelled for the past two years. Federal Agricultural Minister David Littleproud today pledged $3.2 million to make sure the show goes on. The 2022 event will be held from September 22 to October 2. Well, there's a new promise in the battle for your online shopping dollars. Customers will soon be able to get almost any retail item delivered to their door in under an hour. It's online shopping like we've never seen before. This is no longer about two-day delivery or next-day delivery. The Uber Eats of the fashion world. The same way that consumers have been able to open up Uber Eats and order their restaurant food or their groceries uh, and have that delivered within an hour, uh, they'll be able to do that now for, for retail. The food delivery giant has teamed up with ShipIt, promising one-hour delivery for items like fashion and homewares. Customers will be able to purchase from their favourite store, track the order via real-time GPS and receive the parcel all in less than 60 minutes.
Ship It acts as the glue that, that sits between the retailer and their delivery provider. So the retailer doesn't need to really change much on their end. If they're connected to Ship It, they can now avail themselves of options like Uber's same hour delivery service pretty easily. 30 cities across Australia are already included in the rollout. Stores like Q and Sephora are quickly jumping on board. There is a slight catch though. The store must be within a 10 kilometre radius. When a customer is checking out on our website, they're provided options based on the location of the inventory of our, in our stores and also the customer's delivery address. It comes after Coles announced it was teaming up with a Google-backed startup to deliver groceries via drone within minutes last week. Experts tipping a rapid acceleration of delivery services in the next five years. Rochelle Brown, 7 News. A pair of loggerhead sea turtles has been nursed back to health after they were caught in extreme storms late last year. When the Melbourne Aquarium team rescued Cutler and Warney, they were suffering from a condition called floater syndrome caused by a sudden drop in water temperature. Cool. The sea turtles have now received their final vet check and are off to Sydney to be released back into the ocean. Sport is next with Tim Watson. Tim, the AFL's now taken action against Jordan Degoe. Beck, he's been hit with another huge fine for that wild night in New York. More on that coming up. Plus why Joel Selwood's successor could be forced to sit out round one. The latest on a host of big names racing the clock for the season opener as another giant comeback looms. An Aussie test star goes off the deep end as an outfield stunner secures one day silverware. And Ben Simmons has the last laugh as his former fans turn ugly in Philadelphia. Welcome back. Newly appointed Geelong Vice Captain Tom Stewart is facing an age-old footy dilemma. The man tipped to be Joel Selwood's successor could be forced to sit out the Cats' season opener. Elevated to co-vice captain, Tom Stewart has emerged in the box seat to succeed Joel Selwood as skipper, but his leadership traits might need some work. Grumpy. Oh, <laughs> grumpy, angry, serious. The triple All-Australian's wife due to give birth to their second baby in 10 days, just two days after the Cats' round one date with Essendon. Geelong to be without Gary Rowan and Sam Menegola, with Mitch Duncan also racing the clock with his calf concern. But best Henry, and fairest runner-up nice. Jack Henry is pushing to play after pre-season foot surgery. <laughs> Jake Stringer with his sights set on the Cats, training fully today, but still with work to do to prove he's over a groin injury. Fingers crossed he's right for round one, but... There's a few more things he needs to tick off in between here and then. Speedster Andy McGrath reduced to watching. Forward Aaron Francis failing to train and in doubt with a lingering knee injury. With Hollywood superstar Eric Banner watching on. Dan Hanabry continued training away from the main group and will miss round one. Paddy Ryder still managing Achilles soreness, completing his own individual session seven days out from the clash with the Pies. GWS has added retired ruckman Shane Mumford to its VFL list, making him eligible as a COVID top-up at the ripe old age of 36. And at Hawthorne, Tom Mitchell has moved to allay fears of his groin injury, completing most of the Hawks' session this morning. But Jay Gromira was reduced to running away from teammates as he battles a hamstring complaint. Tonight, defender Chankwath Jath will make his bid for a surprise round one berth off a knee injury when he lines up in a VFL practice match. Tim? Thanks, Mitch. Collingwood superstar Jordan Degoe has just been fined another $10,000 for his New York bar fight. Returning to Chief Football Reporter Tom Brown. And Tom, the AFL has doubled down on Degoe's punishment. Tim, privately in recent months, the AFL was fairly scathing of Degoe's action. So in one respect, this action is not a surprise on the AFL's part. The AFL found that Degoe didn't instigate the fight, but because he was intoxicated, according to the league, it did contribute to the outcome. Degoe is now required to contribute $10,000, a fine in effect to the Salvation Army. Tim, moving tonight to the top up players, clubs are scrambling to identify 20 players in particular. Melbourne are interested in former giant Sam Reid. I also understand tonight that Cale Hooker has been sounded out by several clubs, including Carlton. The former bomber, who's very popular at the Bombers, respectfully declined a lot of that interest, Tim. In terms of the money for the top up players, I understand they'll get $1,000 if they train with the AFL club for the week and $4,000 if they play a game. But Kale Looker, a lot of interest in him, but he's respectfully declined that interest, particularly from the Blues tonight, Tim. Thanks, Tom. 
Western Bulldog Tom Liberatore will play in round one despite his recent COVID positive. The dogs say they're sick too of being the sentimental favourites of the footy world. We've got to press to be consistent and be in the top four now and um, I think externally as well we got to be looked at as a side that um, we've taken seriously and not everyone's second favourite club. Dogs defender Alex Keith looks set to shake off a leg knock to take his place next Wednesday night against Melbourne. Melbourne's Libby Birch is leading the call for the Ds to host an AFLW final or grand final at the MCG. We need to have our female footy presence at the D and I think it's time. Birch will become the first Victorian to play 50 AFLW games in tomorrow night's match against Carlton. The Ds will wear pink socks to raise awareness for breast cancer. Australian leg spinner Mitch Swepson will make his test debut in Karachi. Aussie captain Pat Cummins confirmed the Queenslander will replace Josh Hazelwood. It's the best opportunity to take 20 wickets. And, yeah, just think he's, he's ready. Um, so, yeah, excited, excited for him. Wicketkeeper Alex Carey still a bit sheepish after falling in the hotel pool when the Aussies arrived yesterday. While Hilton Cartwright took one of the catches of the season as WA beat New South Wales in the Marsh Cup final. Champion jockey James McDonald is chasing another pair of Group 1 wins tomorrow at Flemington, including star Colt Home Affairs in the Newmarket Handicap. All the action is live and free on 7 from midday. And Ben Simmons has had the last laugh in Philadelphia, returning to his former home for the first time since he was traded. The Aussies felt the full wrath of the 76ers fans. Still sidelined with a back injury, Simmons sat on the bench with extra security keeping the locals at bay. His new team, Brooklyn, smashed Philly 129-100. Paddy Mills was trying his best there to protect him. I think we got the message, didn't we? Yeah, I, don't I think he did too. Yeah, I don't think we're getting any free sex there anytime <laughs> soon. Thank you very much, Tim. Well, Jane is next with the forecast. Jane, the long weekend <laughs> looks great. Great Beck, It does indeed. We are warming up in the sunshine, but... There is the slight risk of a storm. The full details are next. Hello again. It'll warm up across the long weekend. There's lots of sunshine, but high humidity returns along with the risk of thunderstorms. Today, no humidity, so we started cool. It was 12 in the city. There was a mixture in the sky. Cloudy at times, bright sunshine at others. It only just reached the top of 20. There is an area of cloud stuck over southwestern and south central Victoria. It's pushed in on southeasterly winds. East Gippsland had some much needed sunshine before a field of cumulus popped up this afternoon in the east. Also a bit of wispy high cloud coming into the west and in the current pattern temperatures are below average. High pressure is in control and we're keeping our eye on the centre of that. Now it was back over to our west, that one there, bringing the cool nights and mild afternoons. But the high centre moves to our east tomorrow, bringing in a new type of weather pattern. Temperatures rise across the long weekend, a little bit tomorrow before a bigger jump up on Sunday and Monday. Now with this comes a return to high humidity, leading to the risk of storms on the last two days of the long weekend. Now, for much of the time, it should be quite sunny, and these storms are by nature hit and miss. So many of us will be like the side bits of this picture and won't see anything at all. But if you are directly underneath a storm, then the rain can be heavy. This here is on Sunday onwards. Around the nation tomorrow, the high to our southeast pushes showers back into the east coast. Now, not heavy as there is no low pressure there. Instead, the heavy falls are moving Moving inland, this area here, potential storms tomorrow, what we'll see here from Sunday. In the west of the, uh, of the country, the heat trough, that has moved inland. So Perth has a cool change, near 40 today, 10 degrees less tomorrow. Turning warmer in the southeast and Adelaide as well with this high over the Tasman Sea. To Victoria, there is the chance of morning fog, otherwise a lovely Saturday. It's generally sunny. Our last cool start, then mild to warm in light winds. It looks delightful no matter where you're heading for the weekend. Closer in, it is a lovely Saturday across the Melbourne area. Only a tiny bit of cloud for most of the day. We are bathed in bright sunshine. It's feeling pleasant in light winds at 24 in Watsonia, 25 in Scoresby, 23 in Melton. It'll be the city's last cool start in this stretch. We've got 12 and a fabulous Saturday on the way, reaching 23 in the sunshine. 
to the eight day outlook we are back to warm and humid from sunday so expect lots of sunshine through the day then some cloud bubbling up in the afternoon and the slight risk of a thunderstorm late afternoon now that activity continues for monday and tuesday lots of dry weather lots of sunshine the risk of a late storm we should have a break from that on wednesday then showers develop into thursday and they may continue at the end of next week but no humidity is over high humidity is certainly back so a lovely saturday is on the way it is our last cool start then warmer nights we've got bright sunshine light winds it's a perfect saturday 23. i reckon that looks pretty good excellent work as always thank you thank very you. much jane and that is seven news for this friday we'll have updates throughout the evening for now though from the seven news team have a great weekend